Oh, the first time playing a console. Almost always a positive memory. I mean, it's practically like fishing with dynamite, given the fact we were probably super stoked to be doing so, especially if your first time playing the console was as a kid. Yeah, our list of expectations usually wasn't too demanding. Of course, your first time playing a particular console may have been as an adult as well, although for the most part, I'd say a lot of us were able to at least try out most of the more popular consoles back in the day, even if we didn't own them ourselves. For example, I had a creepy uncle who married into the family and always gave off some weird vibes. Heck, what family doesn't have an uncle like that? And like magic, he suddenly didn't seem so weird when I was allowed to play his NES every time our family went over to visit. This was how I first experienced both Duck Hunt with the NES Zapper and Super Mario Brothers, as well as many other NES games. Pretty convenient, considering I never owned an NES myself back then. Of course, it sure felt like everybody else did, and luckily most of them would share. Where I had far less luck with people sharing came with the Game Boy. In my experience, every boy who had a Game Boy was more of a jerk than a boy, so to me that thing should have been called the Game Jerk instead of the Game Boy. The Game Jerk, for jerks who like to play games and never share. I spent years, and I mean years, getting turned down for a chance to play the Game Boy. I didn't get my own until 1998, and keep in mind that the Game Boy originally came out in 1989. Heck, I was so used to watching other kids play by that point, I had to remind myself that I didn't have to look at the screen from four feet back and to the side with my neck craned. I can hold the screen right in front of my face. Talk about living. Easily one of the most memorable experiences I had playing a console for the first time. However, when it comes to playing consoles for the first time, one of the more common stories people will have is playing consoles for the first time at the exact same time that everybody else could play it for the first time. The launch of a console. I feel like this became more of a thing as time went on and the release dates of things gained more exposure. Marketing the release of a console became more of an event with later consoles. Heck, the Dreamcast had it burned into all of our heads that it was released a 9999 boy that's a lot of nines if you were a fan of sega and the number nine how could you resist the ps2 came out on 10 26 00. who's gonna get excited for that nonsense fittingly enough the dreamcast is the first console that i personally remember the launch of i had a friend on my hockey team at the time who was kind enough to let me play it so that he could tell me how much better it was than my n6 let me tell you, there are right ways to introduce something and wrong ways to introduce something. Quick little story for you, as told by me and one of my bananas. So, I'm at this triathlon watching the race, and as you typically see at these things, there's somebody who overexerted themselves, sitting on a curb and clearly not okay. And one of the medical team members was trying to get her to eat a banana, despite her saying she'd never eaten bananas before. Now, as much as I love me a good nanner, I'll be the first to admit that they have a strong scent, especially when ripe, that you have to be careful with. Well, surprise, surprise, she barfed all over the sidewalk as soon as that banana got too close. And I'm just going to take a wild guess that she never had the desire to eat one ever again. Now, lucky for my hockey teammate, I didn't barf on his Dreamcast and did end up going on to enjoy the Dreamcast later on while visiting my cousin. But that does make me think that sometimes people have a bad first impression of a console that just ruins it for them. And it may be entirely situational and not have much to do with the console itself. Perhaps the biggest way this could happen is depending on the game you play first. The first game somebody plays for the Nintendo 64 could be either Super Mario 64 or Superman 64, which you can safely say are two very different experiences experiences. Of course, if the console belongs to you, then you'll likely have more control over which game you'll end up playing, but that's still no guarantee it's the best choice. For example, a lot of people's first experience with the Sega Saturn was playing something like Daytona USA, a notoriously problematic port, though I'm personally a fan and would say the soundtrack saves it. But in any case, somebody's first impression
reputation of the Sega Saturn may be that it's a console that handles 3D games poorly, when in fact it could actually do a much better job at 3D than some people gave it credit for. Not to mention all the great 2D games on it, a lot of which were games people didn't even know about, like X-Men vs. Street Fighter, and understandably so because they were left in Japan. And honestly, for a lot of gamers, the entire console might as well have been left in Japan, as tons of gamers never played a Sega Saturn while it was current. I didn't know anybody who had one back in the day. As a result, my first experience with the Sega Saturn, as well as I'm guessing a lot of others, was as an adult, which, lucky enough, meant I had the internet in full force and knew about stuff like all the awesome 2D fighters and shoot 'em ups on the console. The Sega Saturn really is an interesting case for a first experience, though, because the 2D and 3D games can feel so drastically different from each other. I find this especially notable because a big part of our initial impression we get from a system is how the games look. This tends to be a bigger deal with older consoles, as back then the graphical leap between consoles was more noticeable, whereas with modern consoles it's like, oh, slightly more realistic looking, great. But if you jump from something like the Super Nintendo to the N64, oh my goodness, look at Mario's face. All right, and while we're talking about the Nintendo 64, it's probably a good time to discuss how controllers factor into first impressions, because boy oh boy does the Nintendo 64 controller leave a first impression. Can't say it's necessarily a good one, but it's definitely something to look at and hold, or in this case, figure out how to hold. Being perhaps the most indecisive video game controller there ever was, Nintendo tried to cover their bases by having both a handle with a D-pad on it for 2D games, as well as another handle with an analog stick on it for 3D games. Well, that design philosophy doesn't necessarily make itself clear to the average gamer going to use this thing for the first time. At first glance, the possibilities for how to hold this thing may have seemed endless. I think there's an instinct to want to reach every single button all at once, which most people just couldn't do, but check it out, I got your solution right here. Now, if somebody enjoys the games enough, I think they'll be able to overlook the controller. Heck, a lot of people hate the Dreamcast controller, despite loving the console, but it's definitely one of the first things that's going to leave an impression on you, even more so than the design of the console itself, since you're not actually holding the console while you play like you are with the controller. Okay, but lastly, I want to talk about not just the first time you played a specific console, but the first time you played any console, period. There's probably almost nothing that couldn't make this experience special, and it's likely one of the main reasons that you're the gamer you are today. Something like music or movies you can passively experience, but with video games, that controller is in your hands and you're directly affecting what happens on screen. We may be so used to this by now that we take it for granted, but as a young kid, this was mind-blowing to say the least. Okay, so for this video's question, I want to ask you to share a particularly memorable first experience with a specific console, as well as perhaps your first experience with any console, if you can even remember. A lot of us would have been pretty young at the time. So with that, leave your comments and I will see ya in the next video. He's the Red Trooper, yeah, and he's talking, talking about video games. He's the Red Trooper, oh yeah.